Hi everyone, my name is Brandy. I am the owner and artist in Behind Brush by Brandy, and I'm here this week because I wanted to pop in and talk, talk to you guys about a topic that's really relevant to me, and I get asked a lot about uh, questions about it, and that is the topic of shipping. Um, now, I usually avoid this topic like the plague because I hate it more than anything. It is by far the hardest thing I do in my business. Um, and so that is the number one reason that I avoid it because I, I just hate the topic. Um, number two is I felt at one point like I had to make a decision and that was um, what to focus on in my business. I like teaching paint techniques, um, how to use the products and answering those type of questions more than I wanted to be a business coach. And so um, that's a little bit of difference there too. But this topic is really relevant to me right now because I'm going to pause and show you guys what my workspace looks like. Okay, so I have paused and this is just another angle of the same room that I was in, but I want to show you guys I have one, two, there's a mirror, there's another piece behind this, and then one right here um, that are waiting for shipping. This is just in my workspace. I have another four pieces in my storage area that are also waiting for shipping. So I have eight pieces that I am holding on to. This is not a short-term thing. I have been holding on to these for a couple of months now. So if you want to drag out your furniture transactions and make them last months um, and deal with them way longer than you normally would on a local transaction, then you want to add shipping. Um, that is a realistic perspective. It really, shipping is a way that you will drag a transaction out for where locally you would have a normal pickup or delivery um, and interaction with a customer and that piece goes home. When you're shipping, you add on not only the time to find the shipper, to get them um, to accommodate you on their route and pick it up. So there's time to wait there. Um, and then the time that it's on the truck, you're gonna stress about it because you've put so much work into this furniture piece and now it's on a truck traveling nationwide and you can only hope it arrives safely. So you stress about that. Um, and then when it finally arrives, the delivery. Now during this whole time, there's a customer. So there's three people now involved in this transaction, only I'm involved for communication, but I have no control over any of this once that once I've arranged that shipping. So I'm at the mercy of these shippers. I have to sit and wait for them to come accommodate me on their route to come pick it up. And then I, you know, I just cross my fingers that they arrive safely. Now I only use the best of the best that have good reviews and good experience but still you just never know. Um, unreliability is a chronic problem in the shipping world. And so when I think about that, I think about that most of these people are people who have chosen to make a living by being on the road constantly, um, not usually communicating with people by themselves. Um, and so communication is a constant problem. Um, you can reach out as much as you can, but then there's a point when you have to just realize that they're doing what they do and, you know, it's kind of in their hands and you just go on a wing and a prayer that it is going as it's supposed to go. Um, I've had guys that just don't ever get back to me. I schedule shipping and then I reach out to make sure we're still a go and they just never get back to me. And I have to go and rearrange that shipping. Now, I operate my business with a lot of integrity. My reputation is everything to me as a small business. And so when I then have to go buy time from a customer, I usually am the one who's dealing with frustration on that end. And it's frustrating for me as well. And there's just really not a whole lot I can do about it. Um, so, so I would just expect a lot of delays. I would expect an elongated transaction with a lot of communication issues. Um, and that is just the name of the game. So one thing that I do when I'm shipping furniture that I will tell you is I never use anything with the word freight in it. If it's got the word freight in it, it means they want you to create your furniture. So this may be okay if it's um, fairly simple finishes, but how, what I think of when I think of if I'm creating furniture, um, I've literally had a freight company come to my home and say, we will not take the, the package unless we cannot tell what's in it. And what that tells me is they want it wrapped so good that they can't tell what's inside of it because they don't want to be responsible for any of it. If there's damage to that furniture piece, it's going to fall on me. If I use freight shipping and I have packaged my furniture and it gets damaged in shipping, that falls on me. They're not going to guarantee that. Um, unless they drop it off the back of the truck, they're going to say that my packaging was not good enough. 
So I do not package my furniture. I use white glove shipping only. That's not a company, that's a type of shipping is white glove shipping. It means they will wrap it on site for me. They inspect it when they get here. They look for any damage beforehand and then anything from that point on they're responsible for. It's more expensive, but for the type of refinishing that I do, I'm not willing to risk wrapping it in a piece of freight for a company to not even know what they're transporting um, when their sole goal is to get it from point A to B. I want to know that it's being taken care of also. Um, so, you know, all of us in the furniture world, we are sharing shippers. Um, there is no secret out there. Nobody has a secret. Nobody has any special list or anything that they're operating off of. We are all sharing the same people. So anyone who's telling you that this is easy and can be done easily, um, I'm coming with a fair amount of experience in doing this. I've used all of the guys and all of the resources and can tell you it is never easy. Um, I will knock on wood and say I've only had, I've had two bad experiences with shipping and pieces that got damaged. One was a mirror that got broken in shipping. Mirrors are expensive to ship. They hate taking them because they're glass and they're highly likely to break. So um, anything with glass on it, um, if somebody has a big, huge china hutch that they want to ship across the country, I just don't even go there. But mirrors on their own are hard enough. So I did have a mirror that got broken in shipping. Um, the carrier did take care of that. And then I had a table that the carrier took across country and then FedExed back to the customer. Ah, and it arrived in a million pieces. Now, both of those I got taken care of. But if you want to talk about transactions that were drug out, then having to take care of an insurance claim. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is the worst case scenario. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. This is just completely honest with you. Um, I will literally discount furniture pieces for local pickup. If they are local customers, I am thrilled with that. Um, I also find that I have to arrange my schedule because I'm in California. I can't always get guys here whenever I want. So I have to arrange my schedule, how I work, um, based on what needs to go where and when it needs to go. So if I've got a guy that says he'll be here in a month and I have six pieces that need to go out, I know that I have to get those six pieces done for that guy. It doesn't matter if I've got local stuff. That shipping um, creates a deadline for me. So that's another issue. Um, the cost of it, it's never cheap. Um, it can honestly double the cost of your furniture piece in most cases. The shipping will double the cost. It's never cheap, especially for full-size pieces like this. Um, I do not use services like FedEx and Greyhound and all those. Again, that goes back to the packaging issue. I will not package my pieces for them to go out. There are plenty of people that are very comfortable with that. I'm just not comfortable. Most are complex finishes that trying to touch them up would be near impossible. So um, I, I can't even risk the, the possibility of damage when I'm shipping furniture. So um, there's a few things I deal with. I also know that when I'm shipping, I end up having to hold these pieces so that they can go out in bulk because I usually ship more than one piece at a time. Um, it's not really worthwhile for a lot of these guys to drive up to middle of nowhere, Minnesota to pick up one piece. They'll usually come to me because they know that they can pick up multiple pieces. It's a more valuable pickup. Um, but I know that I've got to store those pieces sometimes for months on end. The four that I've got in my storage space, I've had story, I've been storing them for two and three months on some of them. So storage can be an issue when you're shipping because you've got to hold it until that person gets there. And these four that are sitting in my workspace, these were supposed to leave a week ago. Um, mechanical issues are another problem. Weather is a problem. Um, if there's snow on the road, if there's snowstorms, it's going to cause delays. And then I go back to, I am the middleman. I am the communication source. And so I am the one who hears from people that are frustrated that now their delivery is delayed, even though I had nothing to do with it. Um, so I'm talking about this now because it's so relevant for me with eight pieces that are waiting to go out and ship. It is an absolute nightmare. I would trade it any day of the week for a local pickup. So if you are doing good business locally, if it means that maybe you take a little hit in your um, revenue stream to sell a piece locally, it is 100% worth it to me. Um, I actually try to focus on building my local business. I live in a fairly large area. The Sacramento, California area is a very large area. Um, the Bay Area is not far from us. So I have a very large region that I can pull customers from without having to ship. 
but because I work on social media, my audience is nationwide. And so it creates a demand that I need to be able to fulfill. And unfortunately, that means that I need to be able to ship furniture. And I'm very honest with my customers. So most of them have realistic expectations. That's very important that you set realistic expectations for your customer, that this is not going to be, they're not going to pick it up at my house and you're going to have it in two days. This is not Amazon, guys. It's not Amazon, I promise you. Um, it's not even USPS. <laughs> um, it's going to take time. It's a very slow process. There are times a shipper can have a piece for three to four weeks with them in their truck driving across the country before it ever gets to its destination. So there again, drying out the transaction. Um, so my best advice is if you're doing good business locally, do good business locally. Value that business, treasure it, because that is really where you want to be. Um, but expect a lot of headache and hassle if you're going to get involved in the shipping world. If there's any myths out there telling you that it's easy to do, easy to set up, um, I would call those falsehoods completely after doing this for as long as I have. Um, so, so that's the best advice I can give. I usually tell people when they message me to um, avoid it like the plague unless you absolutely have to do it. And then, you know, and then you have to do it. But treasure that local business. Of, avoid shipping if you can. It's going to make your, it's going to complicate things more than you even know until you've done it a few times, until you've had a piece get damaged in shipping, until you've had an upset customer because their shipper hasn't arrived on time and there's nothing you can do about it. You're giving up control over something, over your transaction to a third party and a lot of them are not that reliable, you guys. So I hope that's kind of helpful. It probably isn't what most of you guys want to hear, but I wanted to put out a very realistic um, expectation of what it looks like. And for my customers too, like I said, I give them a realis realistic expectation. I would give that to my followers as well. Um, so best of luck to you guys. I will avoid questions on this topic still like the plague because I hate the topic. So feel free to not drop them in the comments below. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, but I hope that helped you guys feel a little bit like you, you, you kind of know a little bit about what the shipping world looks like and a realistic view of it at that. So anyway, you guys have a great week. I will get you guys later. If you haven't already, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. Um, we do a little bit of talking every week, but we do a little bit of painting every week too. And that's my favorite part. You guys have a great week.